In Greece, a victim of the February 28 deadly train collision near the town of Tempe has filed a criminal complaint against the Hellenic Railways Organization demanding a full investigation into the accident. Two trains raced towards each other after mistakenly going onto the same track, killing 57 people and injuring dozens. The accident sparked public anger and the debate has focused on decades of safety failings and mismanagement by Greek railway officials. The country is also set to hold national elections in July and the incident seems likely to put major pressure on the conservative government. Let's take a closer look. Πίσω από μία σειρά ανθρώπινων σφαλμάτων. Και θα ξαναπώ αυτό το οποίο ήδη έχω γράψει. Αν το έργο της τηλεδιοίκησης είχε ολοκληρωθεί, αυτό το δυστύχημα θα ήταν πρακτικά αδύνατο να είχε συμβεί. This is the apology that came after Greece's worst ever train crash. On the evening of February 28th, a passenger and freight train collided near the city of Larissa after racing towards each other for an entire 12 minutes. The trains had 354 passengers on board, and 57 of them were killed. They were mainly students returning to university after a holiday weekend. Following the incident, Transport Minister Kostas Karamanlis resigned. But it did little to calm the growing anger. Frustration over poor railway safety boiled over into protests. Thousands of people rallied across Greece for days and at times clashed with police. On March 2nd, Greek railway workers went on strike for 48 hours, accusing the government of negligence. Then it grew to a nationwide strike. It paralyzed the country, and even international flights had to be canceled. But the government laid the blame on one person. The local station master, a 59-year-old former porter trained just a year ago, was arrested and charged with causing mass death. Greek authorities released audio in which the driver was told to ignore a red light. But many say the issue runs much deeper. The Greek railway system already had long-running staffing and security coordination issues. An overhaul a few years ago led to cost-cutting and job losses that have weakened rail safety. Currently, Greece has enough staff to oversee only 300 of the 2,500 kilometers of track. In 2017, the economic turmoil forced Greece to sell its entire passenger train operation. And the national railway company, Hellenic Train, was handed to the Italian Ferro V dello Stato Group, along with the task of updating the network. Meanwhile, the French contractor, Alstrom, still hasn't installed an automated signaling system, which was meant to be up and running in 2016. Its partner in the project, the Greek construction company, Octor, has meanwhile come under repeated fire for contract violations. Mitsotakis has now promised a transparent probe into the crash to right the past wrongs, but for many Greeks, it's already too late. Let's cross to Athens now and speak to Alexandros Litsadakis. He's a Greek journalist who followed this story closely. Alex, great to have you with us. Now, do we have any clearer picture on, about what happened that tragic day and who is to blame? So, we need to say that the Greek trains are heading on completely manual system. There is no active tracking system on, only in some regions, no safety system or even red and green lights. So drivers are forced to pass red lights after a communication with the manager of every station. So uh, 
the night of the accident, the manager forgot to change the keys in the railway and the train started heading in the same line with a cargo train to the other. So the two trains were moving in the same direction for 12 minutes. And as we know from testimonies, only seconds before the collision, some of the people working inside found out about the mistake that happened in the Larissa station. So, yeah. Uh, what yeah. do we know now about this criminal complaint filed by one of the victims of the crash? Yeah. So, a 19 years old student in Thessaloniki filed the shoe against uh, not only the driver um, and the managers who thinks is also responsible, but also for the people responsible for the railways uh, in the state. And I mean, in office, officials uh, regarding the safety issues in the Greek trains. This issue may end up in charges against uh, officials, but that's something that we don't know for sure yet. Alex, this is likely to be a very, very complicated investigation. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, this tragedy, of course, has shaken Greece and not just the Greece, the entire region. Uh, so many young lives lost. Uh, why do so many Greeks feel betrayed by the ruling powers? So the issue is that uh, this uh, tracking and safety system needed an up upgrade. And the Greek state signed a contract called 717 back in 2014. Uh, since then, conflicts between the companies involved never made it possible for the project to be completed. So the main issue doesn't have to do only with this current government. It has to do also with the previous government that are also held responsible for that kind of acts for not completing uh, the project. So uh, that also has to do with other several issues that are coming in, in the news uh, and in the Greek reality. I mean, people are frustrated with the political system, not just for, for this government that is also held accountable for several um, issues and uh, several mistakes. Uh, so the Greek people are feeling uh, angry about uh, the whole management of the last years. So they're trying to feel something politically and get to a, a direction, but there is no something clear right now on where are these demonstrations are heading. Yes, it seems like we are talking here about years and years of neglect and mismanagement, underinvestments as well. Um, are Greece's financial woes part of the story here, Alex? Well, um, I will doubt that. Not that I'm sure that the financial crisis made it impossible or uh, we headed to some cuts uh, that were needed, let's say, uh, but the issue is more of politically. I mean, if there is um, um, a project that should be completed in and has not been completed for nine years, and it has to do with safety issues, with things that uh, lives are um, in danger in, 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 because of that, that's something that it's serious and doesn't have to do just with some money that were not spent correctly. And this is why um, the European prosecutor started a criminal investigation in November of 2022 for misspending of the European money that were used on this exact project. And also Greek investigators were also checking on the same issue. And it seems that a person had found criminal liabilities regarding this project. Though a few months before she filled her proposal regarding this issue, she was replaced from this independent enforcing institution that she was working. So I think that that has to do more with how the political system is working and how the state is not dealing with some issues that should be dealing with. Right. And these are the largest protests in Greece uh, since this co government came to power uh, in 2019. We'll keep an eye on that. For now, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, great to have you with us on Across the Balkans. Thank you for covering. And that's it for this week from me and the whole team here in Istanbul. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.